Good evening. Hello once again, everybody. 21st Century Jedi here with you. Um, and I am doing okay so far. Getting ready to do another run at Pool of Radiance here. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Midweek hump day. Uh, I'm doing okay myself. Um, I'm, I'm physically, I'm feeling good. Mentally, I'm okay, good. You know, everything's good so far. Um, payday this week, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, get the chance to play um, Pathfinder again this weekend. That's going to be fun. Um, I always have a blast when I play the, the in-person game, and uh, this one's going to be no exception. I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I just I love playing Cap. I love playing that Captain America character, and it's just it feels like a natural fit to me, and I... I love it, um, and I I can't wait to, to every session that we play. I can't wait to play it. So, um, what's going on here? So tonight, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to play Pool of Radiance, and uh, you know we're going to go through this. I believe we left off. We had completed the wealthy area, if I'm not mistaken. And we need to kind of work our way back out of that. I'm just going through the guide right now. Uh, we're not at the graveyard yet. We're getting close to that, though. Buccaneer base. Yeah, we're working our way towards the graveyard. We're not quite there yet. We've got a ways, got a ways to go, actually. And I'm looking at this. But... We'll get there. Um, where is it? My goodness. Wilderness, Temple of Bane. Temple of Bane is probably where we're going to wind up going to next. So I, I renamed this stream a little bit incorrectly here, so I apologize for that. But uh, we're done with the wealthy area, I believe. Um, let's just double check the area and see where we are at. Yeah, we are at the bottom there. I'm pretty sure we did section 12, right? Pretty sure we did that one. Yeah, we did that. Okay, so. Um, Trying to see if there's anything else I missed. We did Cobalt Mansion. We can't rest until we do this one in the Temple of Bane. Temple of Bane. Big attack after the last treasures. I'm just looking through the guide right now. So the, the temple itself doesn't look bad. There's not a lot of encounters, but it could be a pretty big encounter, depending on how we do this. So, um, There are treasures awaiting. We will be attacked by... Wow, there's a lot... <laughs> this will be fun. Um, Mace. They don't say anything about Mace. He's a character in here that we're going to be facing. Apparently Mace is the head of the Temple of Bane. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. The final battle in this looks like it's going to be a doozy because even though they're orcs, we're going to be facing off against a boss guy, which who knows how tough he is, with 30 orcs, 20 more orcs and five orc leaders 
Now, they distinguish between the 30 orcs and the 20 orcs for some reason, probably because of equipment or something like that, but they're still orcs. You're looking at 50 orcs plus five orc leaders plus the, the actual boss man himself. So, yep, we got that. Um, the strategy here is you can choose to favor, favor either choke points or wide open spaces for casting fireball, depending on where you search for the last treasure. The orcs are easily dispatched with fireball, but enough orcs are armed with bows that they can be a problem for lower level parties. I really don't feel like wasting a fireball on orcs. I don't. I, I don't want to waste a fireball on them. Where's the encounter going to come in? Oh, and then there's this Durton guy. I wonder if I want to get him or not. We could go all the way back and pick him up. It's not a bad idea because I would like to... I would like to empty out as much of my character's inventory as possible so we can carry all the stuff back. Because we're going to get, according to the list here, we're going to get two scrolls, no, three scrolls, one, two, three potions, a wand, a dust vial. And then there's the weapons, hand axe, dagger, hammer, mace, morning star, scimitar, spear, short sword. That's quite a bit of treasure right there. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think I want to go back if I can. I think I can do that without issue just by leaving the wealthy area and getting out of town. Got to go back over the, let's see, I got to go what? Are we running into an encounter already? It's probably another orc patrol, isn't it? Hey, Foxfire, there you are. We're surprised by orcs. Oh, man. Didn't expect this. So, um, one thing I would like to do, this is something I've been meaning to do for the longest time now, is I, because of the way things have gone between being unemployed and my health and all that stuff, I really haven't felt the desire, the energy to focus on trying to improve the stream. Um, I've been just trying to kind of keep things status quo just so we can keep things moving along and having a stream. Um, I would like to change that. I would like to try and start improving the stream a little bit. And one thing I would like to try tonight is I would like to try to do a little bit of hopefully um, royalty-free ba uh, background music. Um I'm doing okay, Foxfire. Doing very good. Uh, except for these orcs that are about to slaughter me here, apparently. Holy crap. We're going to need some sleep spells. Definitely going to need some sleep spells here. Fireball. I'm not wasting fireball on orc. I was just talking about that before you hopped on. I don't want to waste fireballs on orcs. I'd rather waste it on something that is worth throwing it at. Um, uh, the final battle in the Temple of Bane is going to be like 50 orcs. And even that I don't want to use Fireball on. Much as, as handy as it might be, sleep spells do the job. Nine at a time. You know, if I, if I cast like four or five sleep spells, I can pretty much obliterate them. Because they're orcs. They're, they're low-level creatures. They... Why waste the fireball on them? Anyway, what I was talking about before is I would like to introduce a little bit of background music to the stream. Um, I tried doing this when I first started streaming. 
and I got burned by this because I think I used pretzel rocks and the you know they they strenuously say up and down oh our stuff is you know royalty free or you know you can use this as long as you abide by our rules and I did that and it turns out a couple of songs that were in the mix were not royalty free and therefore what Twitch decides to do is if they detect a song like that they will um, mute out that area of the stream where you know that's happening where that song is so any speech that I make in there any sound effects from the game any of that it's all gone so I've been reluctant to bring back background music though I miss it I, I really like having I think it adds an ambiance to the stream a little bit. It kind of gets you into the thing instead of just me gabbing around or just listening to this, um, to the game when it doesn't make a lot of sound. So um, I'm going to put on what should be some background music here. Um, according to the artist who's done this, um, it says 100% copyright safe. Credit Carl Casey at White Bat Audio, which I'm going to do right now. Um, I will throw it into, you don't hear the game at all. Well, mm, should you hear the game? You kind of should. Maybe, you, I don't know. Let me check that. Let's try it, shall we? Um, let's first have her cast. She's going to use a whole person. When you do the space game, I hear it. Okay, right. Um, see, sleep spell there, probably. Throw one there. Oops. I'm looking through my sound things right now just to see where it should be coming in. Um, let me see if it comes in at all. <laughs> that should be that should be audible to you. Um, it came up pretty high. Renolf, um, can you cast? You can cast, right? Oh, you you do have it. Okay, go ahead and use it. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put on, okay, good, you heard the casting, so you can hear it. Um, the background music is going to be desktop audio, which I need to unmute, and I need to give credit to the artist here, so I want to make sure that I do that just right. Um, I'm going to throw a little text thing in here. So just give me a moment here. I'm going to throw a little text box up. And let's see. Text. Uh, music credit. Whoa, that's really big. <laughs> My goodness. Can we get that size down a little bit? Holy crap. Someday I gotta really learn. Whoa, that's nice. <laughs> Come on. You're kidding me with this. I really got to get into studio mode and do this better, a lot better. That's another another thing I need to work on. 
So we will put this in here. I love how it just flips the thing around too. Lovely. I just want to bring this a little bit lower. Come on. Jeez Louise. There you go. Doesn't get much better than that. Okay, so without any further ado, I will go ahead and bring this up. Um, give me one moment. I'm going to try and keep it very low as well. Oh, nice. It's on the audio output capture, huh? Let's turn that down. Oh yeah, we can finish fourth level. Interesting. I would love to get up to fifth level if I could. You'll have to let me know if the background music's too much or too little here. <clears throat> I, I am super excited for... Um, I'm super excited for Saturday. Completely super excited for it. As I was starting off the stream, I was saying that I absolutely enjoy playing this Cap character. Look at that, they're already surrendering. I can't tell if the audio is loud enough or not. Um, I'm trying to keep it low, but not too low. Right now, I can hear the music in my ear fine. I can't tell if it's like coming through on the stream bad or good or whatnot. So, call it a test stream. We'll see how this how this goes. But yeah, I'm, I am super stoked. I love playing Cap. I love, I love playing that campaign so far. I do feel like this is still a little bit much in my ear. Wow, these guys really did not want to put up a fight today. They had me outnumbered. So my goal here really is, um, for tonight anyways, I want to try this background music thing. I want to play this uh, game out, but I really don't want to, I don't want to throw a whole lot of um, commentary tonight out there in case I do get muted.
Okay, you, yeah, it's probably barely audible at this point. Let me try and crank it up a little more. All right. How is that? On my sound meters, it looks like it's it's registering much more now. But hopefully it's not too, you know, obtrusive. <clears throat> Like I mentioned before, I need to I need to get better with OBS and need to get practice more, you know. I know there's a studio mode that allows you to plan changes before you push them out to your live stream and that's the kind of stuff I need to practice with really just need to set up practice with that stuff and prepare for it um, I'm learning so I don't beat myself up over it too much Share the treasure out. Hmm. No. Why am I running into a whole bunch of fights now? I don't get it. Uh, parlay? Yeah, get out of here. I don't want to deal with you guys. Uh, where are we at? So now I'm north. There's a doorway here. Right, I gotta go this way. I gotta go... I don't want to go to Covell Mansion, do I? Is that where I need to go? No. No, I should be able to exit to the wilderness, I believe. Oh, here we go with the patrol again. parlay our way out of this one. Ugh, more orcs.
I do hear a little bit of commotion outside my door, so I suspect I might have to pause the stream momentarily to say goodnight to the grandkids. We shall see. They're in sleep formation. I just got to get them. Oh, there you are. You should be in in bed soon. Because I'm on a stream right now, dear. Yeah, you, you can't really hide because I can still see you in the camera. I'll be right back, folks. I'm going to go ahead and say goodnight to this one. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This is one of the many things I have to work out with streaming, is uh, trying to ensure that I am not disturbed while I'm streaming. It's not a terrible thing, it's just just trying to protect the, the ones you love, I suppose. Cast that, huh? Uh, just move then. Take down one of them. Let's see if these guys will surrender before I even have to cast sleep. Nope. Not likely. <laughs> hmm. Apparently I've used up my sleep spells.
Let's see who's next. Let's use you this way. Just surrender, guys. Come on. Don't make me cast a spell here. These guys don't give up. There they go, finally.
What the? Where are we? Wait, what? E3 should have taken us to the wilderness. Ah, uh, it took us to Temple of Bane? Rats. I don't want to go there. E1, I gotta go the other way. Darn it. Ah, uh, here we go. Did we make it? Yes. Alt 8. Went the wrong way. I can't believe that. back. Alright, so we'll rest up, we'll heal up, we'll sell what we can, I'll try and minimize the load on the party, level up whoever we can. We did get, we did get quite a bit of experience. Let's see if we can keep that up there. And of course it's nighttime, so we're gonna have to rest. Let's see. Uh, from what I remember, come to the south. We gotta go this way. Right there's the hall. Uh, this is the training area. We could probably go in here. quick snapshot here. All right, Amelina, sixth level cleric, take it. Nice. She's maxed, I believe. I don't think you can go any higher than sixth level here, so that's pretty cool. Renolf can't yet.
who can be a next level magic user? Anyone? No one. Interesting. I gotta deal with Schmudley here. Do you wish to duel? No. Kick your butt. And no, I don't need anybody else here. Duel can do it. I, I was thinking he'd be a rogue. Hold on. Do I want him to be a rogue or do I want to stick with it? I don't know. Renolf. Yeah, why not? Be a fighter. If you can't be a cleric, be a fighter. Can't do it. Hathral can't do it. Um, I kind of... Hmm. You know what? Train to be a fourth level fighter. Why not? He gained one hit point. Unbelievable. They are so chintzy with giving out hit points for this. Verify that our rogue can't level up. I kind of want to pool all the money together and see if I can get a composite, fine composite longbow at this point. Nope. Might as well sneak out the back door. One of these places I have to go to the temple. We might as well rest up here and heal for the night. Although it's only Tauros and he's healing. Look at that, one Cure Light Wounds was all I needed. Memorize the Cure. He gets, she gets a third level spell now. Um, do 
another whole person. Oh, what is the third level spell to do on this? Probably... I don't even know what's coming up. It's nothing big here, but... Prayer, maybe? Where is darn cleric spells? Well, prayer's a good one. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with just prayer for now. Out of all these spells, the only other one I could think of might be Dispel Magic or possibly Cure Disease later when we face mummies. But for now, this is good. Get everybody back up here on the spell list. Detect magic. Go get sleep. Um, let's have knock ready just in case. Um, what's left to cure? No, I think you use sleep. Yeah, okay. So we're still at that stage of the game where sleep is still effective as a spell. Um, when the enemies become less... Um, Vulnerable, I guess is the best word. More resistant, less vulnerable to sleep. Um, then something like Magic Missile will probably be more in line with this thing. So,
Wow, we really did use quite a few spells here, didn't we? Did not expect that. All right, so now that we've done that, we have to sell our crap. We have to sell our crap and then see how much money we have total and if we can do anything with it. Let's um, do a quick snapshot here. We've got the background music on very quiet. I'm going to bring it up another five notches here just to see if, like, when I play this back, if it's going to be noticeable or not. I really like the, the music um, that Carl Casey put down on this. Um, it's kind of a cool synthwave vibe to it. I like it. All right, so let's see. Let's start from the top. Oh, she's got jewelry to appraise, huh? That's going to change things. Items. She doesn't really have anything. Let's have her appraise all the jewelry. 400, sell, sell. 3,000, holy cow. That's what we want to see more of those. 750, 3,000, yes. More, cha-ching. Beautiful. That was good. Oh man, 2324 platinum. That is 10,000 gold pieces minimum right there. That's like 11,500, I think. That's nice. That's that's a big chunk of the way towards getting one of those fine composite longbows, which we want. Let's see what you can sell, Tauros. Uh, let's see. I like that two-handed sword. Short post shield. Uh, yeah, you get nothing to sell. <sighs> I don't know if we even picked up anything, did we? Other than the jewelry. I don't know if we picked up anything else valuable. Short sword, chain mail, clerical scroll, ring. Uh, we have to ID the ring, don't we? Ring of feather falling, yep. It's two spells. Longbow. Why do I have two swords? Three swords, actually. I can see this one going against the larger creatures, but the short sword plus two and the broad sword plus one, I gotta make a choice between those, don't I? Right now I'm at a 2d4 plus four.
1d6 plus 5. The broadsword's better. By a hair. Both will give you minimum of 6 damage if you hit with them. But this will give you a maximum of 8, 12 damage. Whereas the short sword plus 2 would give you a max of 11. So we'll stick with the broadsword plus 1. We'll sell, you know, we're just going to sell this. 2,000 gold pieces, gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Keep the scrolls. Keep the long sword. Oh, I want to see how much platinum you have. I missed it. 687. We need a total of 5,000 platinum to get one bow. Twenty-three, twenty-four plus. Yes, yeah, we only got a three thousand platinum right now. We're gonna have to somehow pull two thousand more. It's not bad. Evendal's got some platinum too. What can you sell? Scroll. Uh, that longsword isn't really doing us much good. There's not much I want to get rid of here though. Then we have our thief. 1870 strength. He needs arrows. Join. He probably should get some more arrows, I imagine. He's got a lot of scrolls. Those bracers, I think those bracers should go. Probably should sell those. Those aren't doing us much good here. Holy cow! 6,000 gold pieces, man. I gotta look those up now. Is it really worth doing that? Doesn't say anything. Uh, I gotta try and do better than that. Hold on. Give me better. Let's see. We really don't need the bracers.
So the best combination is to have a ring of protection plus three with Bracer's AC four. That's as good as plate mail plus two without the encumbrance. Huh. Uh, who has the ring, I wonder? I think it's Amelina. According to the guide here, it says that if you're not using magical armor, such as plate mail or whatever, it improves the armor class by its bonus. So it does work well with Bracers of Defense, apparently. Go figure. I really want to sell them. She's got Leather Armor plus 4 and the Ring of Protection right now, which probably, let's see, you were at negative 3. You're still at negative 3. Uh, so really the ring is not doing her any good, so we'll trade it to somebody. Who's going to get the ring? He's already got plate mail plus two, which is the best, I think, in game right now. I don't think we can equal that so far. If my math is correct, I don't think we can touch what these guys have already. Let me trade the ring to, to Farinduil and, and just try and tinker with that. My, my guess is that the Bracers of Defense AC6 are just not good enough. If there were four, AC4, I might consider it. Because you get that plus the Ring of Protection plus three. That's as good as a Plate Mail plus two without the encumbrance according to the guide. Which would be great. So if we take off the Chain Mail plus one, do the Ring and this, what does this get us? Your AC is 1. If you take off the... This should get you AC 0, which is what you were at. This is still AC 0, yeah. So really, we can't improve upon it, according to this. The best I could do is get AC1 with the Ring of Protection and the Bracers. Sell away. That ring of protection, though, that, that's another one that makes me wonder now, because right now if I turn that off, you're still in AC0. Does anyone in our party not have magical armor? He's got chainmail plus one. He can't use it. Potion, we gotta ID that potion. Extra healing. He really needs to distribute a couple of those. Uh, we need to sell some of these things. I'm guessing 
either the hammer or the morning star. He's going to keep one and get rid of the other. Let's just set him up. He has no shield. How does he not have a shield? Mess that up somehow. He's going to have to go buy one or something. He's 2d4 plus 4 with a morning star. I think that morning star is going to be the winner here. Yeah, definitely. So hammer plus one's going away. You keep the short bow. Yep, sell that. And then we have to. I'm gonna have him buy a shield just for the heck of it. On the off chance I need him to fight melee, I want him to have as much AC as possible. And the Ring of Protection is not going to do it, so... I'll spend the 15 gold on it. Okay. So that's that. He's got the ring. It doesn't really do us any good. Right, we have to figure out, is anybody else using magical armor? Based on the ACs, I guess not. But we'll see. He's got banded mail plus He's got plate mail plus two. And his shield plus one. Okay. Let's um let's pool the cash and see what we've got. We have enough. Hot dog, we have enough. We have 25,000 gold pieces. We can go get that. Let's, um... Ferranduo's got a short bow plus one. What's our other dude have? I think he's got a short bow plus one too, right? <sighs> yeah. I don't know uh, why why do we need to get this fine composite it adds a strength bonus to arrow damage
Okay, so Hatherall, technically. No, Duel should take it, because he's got the super strength. Right? Yeah, he's at 1870 strength. Him and the other dude, if we get them both fine composite longbows, they're going to be dealing some serious damage with that. So, go for it. Let's have you take the 5,000 platinum, go buy it, share out the rest, and then we'll move on. Oh, he can't carry it. How do I want to do this? How do I want to do this now? He's got to get rid of something. Is there stuff that he can trade off? He doesn't have to hold. He's got 1870 strength. How is it he can't carry this? Uh, Hatherall. Take the ring. Take, uh, this. Take that. Get rid of that, too. Now how much can you take? Yeah, <laughs> he can't do it. How am I supposed to buy it? I don't know. We'll try and share it then. Let's do a snapshot. Just for the heck of it. I don't know how I'm supposed to get the coin into his hands. I think the only way I can do it is if I find somebody in our party that can carry 5,000 coins. There's a problem for you. slums, darn it. Not the slums, the city. Why did I say the slums? Uh, we need to go to the shop for... special. Special shop. This way, this way. Oh. Here? Uh, yeah, but I don't think it's going to have what I want. Oh, it is. Okay. So it's going to tell me not enough money. Right. So I have to... I'm going to, to do some finagling here. Hold on. Pool the money. We only have 1908 we can carry there. off your chainmail. 
trade it to Amelina. And the shield. All of that, he <laughs> he can't carry it. What the heck? How are you supposed to buy it? Let's try it the other way. She's got 18,100 strength. It can't get much higher than that. Without some sort of godlike intervention in this game. Trade to Farrandwill. Let's give him the shield. Give him the chainmail. Give him the brass key too, because we don't really need it much. Let's see what how much can she carry, I wonder. Take, oh, she's close, 4,070. All right, if she were to get rid of all her stuff somehow. I don't see how you're supposed to do this, really. Let's give to Renolf, let's give him the clerical scrolls. He's overloaded now, okay. Ready the shield. Trade that to, let's give it to Tauros. Maybe we'll get close here. How are you supposed to do this? What is encumbering her is what I want to know. What am I missing? What am I missing here? I never thought I would have to do this.
I don't get it. So, I can't carry enough coin to buy the bow. Is really what it's telling me here. So if I were to take like 4,000 platinum, right, that should be 20,000 gold. It should tell me I don't have enough money. Do I, did I miss something on the platinum exchange rate? What? What just happened? I, I'm confused. I'm so confused right now. I just bought the bow and I shouldn't have been able to. It says right here, 25,000 gold pieces. That is the equivalent of 5,000 gold pieces. I only had 4,000, I'm sorry, 5,000 platinum pieces. Because one platinum piece is five gold in this game. That's the exchange rate. One platinum, five gold. Should have been 5,000 platinum. I had 4,000 platinum, yet somehow I bought it. So how did that happen? All the platinum that she had is gone. This doesn't even look right either, unless they exchanged things after the sale. Well, I mean, whatever. At this rate, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to share that out. Now we're going to start trading stuff around. So apparently the fine composite longbow is only 20,000 gold, not 25,000. Despite what the game says. I don't think it did. Because I had 5,700 platinum. Roughly. And then some other miscellaneous coin in there. Um... And when I finished, it had about 1,700 platinum in there. Or did it? Now I don't even remember. That is strange. That it, you know what? I'll have to go back and look at the stream now because I think you're right. I think... And by the way, good to see you again, Gruff. Um... I think you're right. I think it it took from the pool, I think, because I think I had 5,000 platinum in the pool. And then when I just looked at it now, it only had 700 platinum. So between the 4,000 I grabbed and then doing that, it's just strange. I really don't understand that. I don't. Like, why would you say I don't have enough money then? Like, I guess, I guess the way to do it is just to pool the money and no one take any money and then just... Maybe the game assumes you pull it from the pool? I don't know. I know it converts the coins after you buy and sell to make a transaction. I know that, but I, I still can't figure out like how you're supposed to carry that much coin and how you're supposed to make the transaction. Sometimes I swear when I've made a transaction in this game, I didn't have enough gold, but I had it in the pool somewhere. Or maybe I just didn't pool it. I don't know. 
Very, very weird. Now I'm going to go ahead and set everybody back here, and then uh, we'll see how that composite longbow looks. Let's see. She had a silver mirror. She had a clerical scroll. She had the mace. We'll give her the holy symbol. She had the leather armor and the shield. Oops. <sighs> it's not in it today. Mentally, I'm just trying to come back around here. Give her the shield, give her the armor, give her the mace. That gets some of her stuff back. I want a bag of holding, that's what I want. Let's give her this one. Give her that one. Give her that one and that one. And you just, why not? Ready the ring of feather falling just because. He was doing 1d6 plus 1. Now he does two more points of damage. Eh. I mean, a little more damage, I guess. It doesn't hurt, but... Seems like an awful lot of stuff to go through, a lot of trouble to go through just to get that extra two points of damage. I think that's it. Let's just uh, head back out. All right, so now I got to go to did the wealthy area. Next area is Temple of Bane, I believe, which I have to go back to the wealthy area for. All right, away we go. Uh, let's just take a quick snapshot again. Uh, I gotta go to the bay, right? Yeah. Oh, I do have something to show you guys. I think you guys will like this. Um, I'm gonna go and do a quick BRB here. As this loads up. And... 
I'll be right back. I got something I want to show you guys. It's, I think you'll appreciate it if you like this game. Okay, I'm back. Um, so as you can see, what I'm holding up in my hand right here is the gold box for Curse of the Azure Bonds, which is the same series. This is, it's actually the sequel to Pool of Radiance that we're playing here. I found this in my my basement the other day. And I was like, I got to show this on stream. So in here, I've got a lot of the cool stuff that came with it. I think I have something for Pool of Radiance in here as well. So, let me go ahead and crack this open. Aha, I do. First thing I have right here. Um, I need the south entrance, I believe, right? Yes. So, the first thing I have that's in this box is... Pool of Radiance Clue Book. So, this gives you, like... You know, I don't know if you can see any of this or not. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to show it to you like this, but you can see it's got like maps and tips and stuff like how to get through some of these things. Because remember, back in the 80s, this is how we did things. You know, we didn't have the internet to rely on, so we had to go on what they gave us for clues. So I'm curious, like where we're at right now. Let me see what I can find on the wealthy area. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to get uh, the Gnome Cleric. I don't even need him. Screw it. So it gives you, like, the maps. Like, for example, we're going into this one right here, the Temple of Bane. And you can see that. That's the map, right? Let's see if I can find a little better lighting for this. But you can see it. That's the map right there. And it gives you some of the the places to go to and, and it shows you the locations um, and on this page it tells you those map locations you know and you know what's gonna happen in each one so I thought that was pretty cool um, let me go ahead and put side one in while I'm here Also, we have floppy disks. That's right, floppy disks. So these are the original Curse of the Azure Bond, uh, Curse of the Azure Bonds disks, uh, disk A, disk B, and disk C. I guess there were only, uh, at least I mean, according to this, there's only six sides to this. But yes, these are the floppies. Look at that. And they're not even right protected either. That's funny. Or maybe they are right protected. I'm trying to remember now. I think they are right protected. Because they don't have the notch. There used to be like right over here. Some diskettes would have a notch there for the disk mechanism in the disk drive to read for it. And if it found that notch there, I think that's what it meant that it could actually write to the disk. It was okay to do so. If it was, if it was solid like this, or if you had the notch, but also you covered it with a piece of like, there's a right protect tab that they have you could put over the little sticker you could put over it it would protect it so that the drive wouldn't detect it as a writable floppy disk 
Crazy stuff, man. You got some sort of an advertisement for PC Sports, some sort of magazine. Oh, look at this. Card to get in for, like, what is this now? TSR, Colleague Order of Heroes. So apparently this is like if you had your, um, with your adventure here, you have your characters, you could actually like fill out the back of this card and send it in or something like that. And you could have your champions known for all my, all time or something like that with TSR, people who made Dungeons and Dragons or made it really popular. Uh, reference card for Curse of the Azure Bonds. This is just uh, like a quick reference card to start the game. Some tips in here as well. What else they have? SSI, business reply card, customer response card. The clue book to Curse of the Azure Bonds, you could order that. Twelve ninety five for that, and it was available in September nineteen eighty nine. What else we got in here? So this should be Oh, quick start instructions. Look at this. Wow. There were a lot of games in this. So apparently this was like for all of them. So this is the quick start instructions, but you can see all the games in there. Pool of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds, Secret of the Silver Blades, Dark Queen of Kryn, Death Knights of Kryn, Champions of Kryn, Gateway to the Savage Frontier, Treasures of the Savage Frontier, and Pools of Darkness. That's nine games. My God. How did we ever play all these? Seriously. Like, Pool of Radiance is, I mean, just playing a couple hours a week, man. I'm like dragging through this thing. I'm trying to see what else happened here. So I've got, I've got the Secret of the Silver Blades rule book. I don't know how... I got that, because I don't ever remember owning Secret of the Silver Blades. But that's interesting. And then, uh, this is another catalog that we have for the games themselves. So, Pool of Radiance right here, you can see. Right there. And then, uh, Heroes of the Lance. That's an interesting one, if you could see this one right here. It's called Heroes of the Lance. It's based on Dragonlance. And you can see it's a whole different type of game. It's a side-scroller. You can see those screenshots. I don't know see if I can see the screenshots here, but it's like a side-scroller. Very interesting. And they even had utility programs that you could load up on your computer and use when you were running actual D&D games. Um, Player's Handbook, Dungeons Master's Guide, Dungeon Master's Assistant, um, all sorts of stuff, man. That's crazy. Now they got all the other SSI games and stuff. I'm just looking at some computer quarterback. I remember that game. That was a pain in the butt. It's crazy. SSI was really good at doing all that. Um, the strategy type games. They were, I mean, strategic simulations. That's in their name. So I'm just looking at some of these games and stuff. I do remember those names and, and seeing them in catalogs and stuff. Very, very fascinating. Like, they had a lot of games. Holy cow. I mean, there's like, there's got to be at least 50 of them in here that I'm looking at. From tank games to uh, westerns to the Dungeons and Dragons stuff to the Civil War. I see Napoleon on here. Um, 
goodness gracious, so many. I mean, if you, you can see the list they had, these are all a list of all the games they produced and the different systems they produced them for. Uh, Apple, Macintosh, which were different at the time, Commodore 64, 128, Apple 2GS, IBM PC and Compatibles, Commodore Amiga, Atari ST, and Atari 8 bit. Fascinating stuff. So, yeah. Um, Nice, nice little find there. I'm going to keep this, even though I'll probably never use it ever again. Um, nice little find to have. Just like nice to be able to share that with everybody. But yeah, so when we talk about when you bought a game and they have their latest catalog inside, yeah. So it's it's nice to be able to show that hey, I did own the gold boxes back in the day, you know. So it kind of gives me a little bit of street cred again, but. Uh, this is what we refer to as the gold box. They had the diskettes inside, the catalogs, the clue books, the instruction guide, all sorts of other crap in there too. So those were the days, as they say. Okay, uh, back to where we're at now with the wealthy area. I need to go on straight through to the Temple of Bane. We're going to push on here and hopefully we don't run into any orcs. Beautiful. Collectors actually collect those kinds of things. You are correct. Yes. Um, and speaking of collections, um, I'm also a, a very avid um, collector of Legos um, because my mom used to work there. I used to actually work at Lego Systems in Connecticut um, when they were still there. Uh, and their, their plant was in my hometown. Uh, in Enfield, Connecticut. Um, so yeah, the uh, my my mother used to work there. Um, they used to manufacture and package and distribute all the sets for for North America from that one plant in Connecticut. Um, there were no other plants, no other distribution places in the U.S., Canada, or anything. It was just North America. That was the one spot right in my hometown. Um, so yeah, I, I grew up being a Lego kid, and I loved uh, collecting Legos. I still have a whole bunch of Legos here, but I found myself actually going back through like eBay and looking to see if I could find some of the really original space sets from my childhood. Um, there was the Space Cruiser, the Galaxy Explorer, there was a Space Shuttle. There were a couple other sets in there too. Um Surprisingly enough, they are not as expensive as I thought they were. I think they probably did a reissue at some point because I did notice a couple of them were different. But looking at the originals and stuff, I think I could probably get them for a couple hundred dollars, um, which is tempting, very tempting to do. And I might wind up pulling the trigger on that soon. Anyway, uh, back to the game. Whoops. Get back to the game. Temple of Bane. Where are you? Come on. All right, here we are. So... Right, E2 is location four. I'm just trying to decipher things. Okay, yeah, so we got to go around to the temple, go in. All right. We don't want to go in the side door, do we? Where are we? Oh, these are like useless doors and stuff, it looks like. You see a group of four orcs whose shields bear a black hand. Oh, here we go again. Uh, let's advance. Talk to these goofballs. We'll parlay with them. Go ahead, Amelina. And let's be... What am I supposed to do with these guys? Anything? Be abusive. Yeah, so this is the same thing as the wealthy area. So 
So we just gotta deal with the patrols. Oh look, goblins. Looks like we're gonna have to fight. Again, I don't feel the need to waste spells on these guys. I think I'm just going to let them hack and slash their way to victory here. Oh, you dirty dog. You're flanking us. Uh, do a delay. Taras and Renolf, I think, could probably free him up. So can Hatherall. Can we let somebody else fight? Come on. There we go. Get him free. What? What? Oh, no. Uh, view. Let me guess. Your arrows are not readied. You have no arrows. Even better. Uh, great. Guess what you're doing? Yeah, you were saying that you you got uh, fantasy grounds going there. Um, can't wait till we can finally get that one all all straightened out and, and actually start playing on it actively. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve, I think, still, but I think we'll we'll definitely do pretty well with it. Good job, Hatherall. Grr. I really, really, really wanted to use this stupid bow. Now I have to do this. What um what adventure are we doing for that platform? I forget the name of it. Good job there, Ferrandwheel. We were just awesome today. There goes one. Shattered Star. Alright. So now I gotta figure out like What character do I want to play for Shattered Star? Because I've kind of figured out a base character for... I, th I figured out a base character for Skulls and Shackles whenever we do get around to that one. Like, I've got a, a general idea of the character I want to play in that one. 
but Shattered Star, I don't know anything about it. Oh, great job. Kay is playing a hunter with an animal companion. Yeah, I got to read up on the um, the background of Shattered Star. Like what the, the premises of the campaign. Kind of get an idea of what I want to make. Pieces of a relic to put together, okay. That almost suggests I need to make an Indiana Jones type. You know Shattered Star better than I do. What do you think? Indiana Jones type? Go fight the BBEG. Could work out, yeah. Um, depends on how I'd have to have to structure it, I guess. Part of me is also thinking I could probably do another Marvel character for Shattered Star, maybe. Kind of goes hand in hand with Infinity Gauntlet, I suppose, because they were trying to put together pieces of a relic there. So if I were to do a Marvel character, what Marvel character could I do that's not Cap? Could do a Hulk. Could do a Hulk. Could do Hawkeye. Hawkeye's a possibility. There you go. Um, could do a Black Widow, could do, I don't know if I can do an Iron Man, I'd have to figure out how to do that. I thought the way that you're playing your character right now in Iron Gods would be kind of like an Iron Man, but I'm not sure. The B team of the Avengers, yeah. True. True. Be kind of cool to play a Thor. I don't know how you do that though, because you really don't. You you can't play a god necessarily. I guess I could play a fallen god. Like Thor is not. You know, he's he's fallen back to earth and he's strong, but he can't necessarily fly. He doesn't have his hammer necessarily, and could work him up that way, I suppose. Right. Turning yourself into a construct, which I've always thought that, you know, if you did it a certain way, you could do it like Iron Man, you know, because that's kind of like what you're building yourself up to be. Black Panther and Bucky, yep. Um, how would those work in D&D &D settings, I wonder? Black Panther... Yeah, you could probably do a Black Panther if if you have the right type of equipment and just make him like 
you know, come up with the right feats and stuff to make it so that he's strong, but also like he can do that whole vibranium trick where it kind of reflects the kinetic energy off of him. Um, Bucky would probably be easier. Unarmed class or arch type. Yeah, he's got to be some sort of a crazy, you know. He's going to be a fighting character of some sort where he's just athletic as all heck. Um, Bucky. Bucky is interesting because um, you could start him off like the Winter Soldier and uh, basically come up with a backstory where somehow he's super strong, he's got the extra enhanced strength and abilities and stuff, but he also has lost an arm. Um, I'm not sure, how would you replace an arm in D&D? You probably have some sort of a construct itself, right? Like some sort of a mechanical arm, like a gnome work style arm cat folk yeah maybe yeah is there anything worth taking here of course there's shields of course there's shields no armor or no uh, arrows though go away goblins bother me anyway um of those I mean, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Black Widow and Hawkeye would be easy to do, I think. Oh, for fuck, crying out loud. Great, we're going to play this game again. Um, so Hawkeye and Black Widow could be done. Hulk can be done. I was thinking with Hulk, you would do some sort of a Yeah, I mean, you're right on with those, basically. Um, with Hulk, you can do basically a huge unarmed fighter. Um, mutagens probably come into factor there. Um, the way I was reading up on it, I think with Hulk, you would want to do some sort of a mutagen. Barbarian mutagen, maybe. Because um, I like the idea that with the mutagen, you transform and you get super strong, and then you go back down, just like Hulk and Bruce Banner type thing, you know? But there may be other ways to do Hulk. Um, oh, here we go again. Oh, this must be the guard. You stand in front of the entrance to a large shadowy temple. An old blind, decrepit orc stands outside with eight orc guards. As you approach, they move, allowing you entrance into the temple. Right, you'd be alchemist for the mutagen. Which kind of makes sense. You could make Bruce Banner be an alchemist, you know. I, I think that's reasonable. Um... Right, so now we can go into the temple. Uh, Alt S. Let's do another save. Um, kind of thinking I want to stop here, but I'll keep going.
let's just go ahead and move forward. Doesn't say about how to encounter Mace, the leader of the, the temple, but I guess all we're supposed to do here is search. So we will search and move. We'll go pick up the treasures. That's easy to do. Uh, there on the floor, you find a trap door. Will you open it? Yes, open the trap door. Here's first treasure. Four hundred experience points. Uh, we're gonna take uh, this is number one, so we're gonna be taking a bunch of scrolls. Clerical scroll, clerical scroll. Um, let's give to Hatherall. Give him the magic user scroll. All right, Foxfire, take care, my friend. Uh, I'll catch up with you probably Friday night. Looks like I'll be seeing a lot of you this weekend, huh? <laughs> Good stuff. Um, looking forward to it, though. Definitely looking forward to the fun we're going to have this weekend. All right, so we're done with that one. Now I gotta move on to number two, which is all the way on the other side. Glad I don't have to hit random encounters for this. So glad. Open the trap door. This is uh, number two, which is potions. 933 experience points though, that's nice. <clears throat> Uh, let's let Tauros take. Huh, interesting. Um, take. Take the potions, I guess. Gold statuettes. So this is kind of what I'm worried about now, is having enough inventory space to take all this stuff. Because it's all about strength and encumbrance now. The next one's going to be all the weapons. it in front of you is an altar that is smeared with blood and covered with crude black handprints what will you do I'm gonna leave it because we don't want to start the fight right now that's weird oh here we go on the floor you find a trap door we open it open that thing So I think we actually got more experience out of this than we would have because they assumed that they list here the different experience levels for these treasures and it's less than what we're actually getting in game because in the guide it says it's listed for a seven person party. It's assumed you have Durton with you, which we don't. I'm just going to have Evendal take, oh, he can't take it. That's not good. Um, just take what you can, guys. I'll load it, I'm going to load them all down at this point. 
take the encumbrance, whatever. We got to be able to take it all because we're going to turn all this into cash. It's just a spear and a short sword. Fair to us to be able to take it, right? Okay, here we go. So now we're going to get the big battle. Here we go. Leading them is a half-orc who is screaming, Kill! Kill! These scum who would steal from our temple! So it's a trap. The half-orc actually wants you to find the treasures, so that way they can just kill you for them. Because apparently they couldn't find them themselves? I don't know. Pardon me while I nibble a little bit.
See, that's what I'm afraid of. There's a lot of bows here. I kind of think I'm going to wipe this, because I don't like the idea of Hathrog getting no experience for this, but it's probably not going to be as much as I think it is. We're getting hit a lot. I'm going to call this a wipe. I'm not even going to go any further because we've already lost two of our party members. We could conceivably try and continue on, but now I've learned got to take Mace down first so he doesn't cast those stupid spells on us. That's the key. Okay. So um, next time we come back to this one, I will, um, I'm going to reload from my last save. We'll find the treasures again. No big deal. And then uh, we'll do this fight again. Knowing better that we'll need to take on Mace fast. Maybe not with a hold person or sleep, because it probably won't work on him, but Amelina is going to have to get in his face constantly and try and hit him. If we get a shot with a bow and arrow, take it on Mace. Because if we damage him, he can't cast spells. That's the rule in the game. So, lesson learned. Uh, anyway, um... That's going to do it for me tonight. Um, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, everybody. Uh, fins up. Bubbles up.
and uh, I will see you guys probably Sunday at this rate. Uh, I've got a busy week coming up. Um, then, uh, you know, I've got plans going on tomorrow night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is all booked up now. So uh, we'll probably resume with... Um, <sighs> Oh, I gotta look at Righteous Fire. That's the other thing. I gotta go fix that game because I keep getting attacked by everybody. Um, I'm gonna see what I can do about fixing that game, and if I can't, uh, I might switch gears on that one so I don't have to play that one. I don't know. Um, if I don't do Righteous Fire on Sunday, I'll, I might do a new game. I might try and bring in Uplink because um, I do want to play that one. It's good to see you as always, Gruff. I appreciate you joining in, man. Um, Thanks again for, for participating and stuff. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. And uh, we'll come back at this. Um, I'm, I'm slowly trying to build myself up to doing more streams per week so far. We're doing two a week. Hopefully I can get up to three and, and get on a consistent schedule. Um, that's my goal anyways. And I'm trying my best here. But life factors always seem to get in the way. But anyway... Take care of yourself. I hope you guys have a great week uh, and go into a great weekend. Have fun. Like I said, take care of yourselves. Do that mental and physical break that you need. Get that rest. Recharge yourselves. And uh, I'll catch you all on the flip side on Sunday night. Take care, guys.